Welcome to a very special W Series race in Assen, the Netherlands. Yesterday, we saw the championship go down to the wire. Jamie Chadwick extended her lead by 13 points over Beitzke Visser, with Emma Kimilainen taking the win in the penultimate race of the season. Today, however, we're trying something a little bit different. Alongside me, Claire Cottingham, in the commentary box, is three-time Le Mans winner, uh, former F1 driver, and now Audi team boss at Formula E, Alan McNish. And Alan, uh, we're doing something quite different today, and it, it's an experiment mental race with no championship points awarded. Yeah, that's one thing about this championship. It likes to sort of push the boundaries, if you like. And uh, this is another one where we're going to have a reverse grid race on championship order. It's actually quite exciting because I think one big aspect of a racing driver's skill set is to overtake. And we'll definitely see some of that today. We will. The cars head out on their formation lap. And like we said, it is all done on those championship standing points. So Jamie Chadwick, who is leading at the moment, will start from the back of the grid and alongside Beitzka Visser. And then then you turn everything around and it'll be Megan Gilks who will be on pole position. And Alan, she's got a big job on her today on her hands, hasn't she? I think they all have a big job because it's a completely different scenario. And as you can see, as we go down through the grid of the current standings, 11th to 20th, Megan Gilks is there down in the bottom with zero points right now. But for me, there's going to be a different winner this weekend. And uh, that's going to be something that's very new. We had our fourth winner of the season yesterday with Emma Kimilainen absolutely dominating the race, but she'll start from 15th on the grid. It'd be really good to see how she gets on as well. And it's going to be interesting as well. We saw the battle go down between Jamie Chadwick and Beitzko Visser yesterday, and, and the battle is going to be a little bit different, isn't it? And it is a circuit that we've kind of they've got used to now, haven't they? They raced it yesterday, they had practice, they did qualifying. It's now a chance to really try something new. Yeah, as we see the circuit up here, it was opened in 1955. It's a motorcycle circuit historically. My father came here in the 60s, but it's 4.542 kilometers, but it's very fast and flowing. And and that has meant that there's been some drivers really clicked onto it. We talked about Emma Kimelainen. And there's others, Marta Garcia, who won the last race in Norris Ring, which is a stop-start nature circuit. And she struggled a little bit to find the rhythm. However, as you say, with one race under their belt, I think they'll all be a little bit better prepared. Can you be prepared for something like this, though, when, when a, a You've got to be. <laughs> you've got to be prepared. That's the thing. That's about motorsport. You never know what's going to happen next, and you've got to always be prepared for the challenge that's thrown up at you. As uh, Megan Gilks, this is a new challenge for her, as she will start on that coveted pole position. She's got the free view down to the first corner, something she's never actually seen in W Series this year. And so I'm sure her heart rate is a little bit higher beating than it has been at previous occasions. Well, Megan Gilks, who missed out at Norris Ring. We've got two reserve drivers in W Series, which is Sarah Bovey, which start, she starts alongside Megan Gilks on the first row, and uh, as well as Vivian Kesley. So it'll be interesting to see. That's the car that we saw a lot of yesterday, Beitzka Visser, who was battling away to get as many championship points as she could get. So we now have the championship heading to the championship battle, rather, heading to Brands Hatch in a couple of weeks' time, which will be fascinating to see. But for now, Beitzka is going to start at the back. You say Megan Gilks might not have seen uh, the turn into the clear view into turn one. However, Jamie Chadwick and Beitzka Visser, it's going to be completely different for them. Well, as we see the view as Visser, the local hero, uh, sorry, that's Chadwick that's just pulling up and Visser is the local hero who will be alongside her. All they've got is a sea of rear wings and gearboxes <laughs> up ahead of them, but also some very hard charging drivers. And this is an opportunity as well, Claire, for drivers that maybe haven't had the best of seasons so far to be able to deliver a result and so from that perspective I think it does give some opportunities So here's the starting grid then, Megan Gilts will start on pole position behind her, Sarah Bovey, Shay Holbrook will be in third Vivian Kesley fourth, Naomi Schiff will be fifth, sixth will be Esme Hawkey, Jessica Hawkins seventh, Sabra Cook eighth, ninth will be Gosia Redest and after her great performance yesterday Caitlin Wood will start tenth Next up will be Vicky Piria starting in 11th, Tasman Pepper 12th, Sarah Moore starts in 13th, Mickey Koyama after uh, a DNF yesterday starts 14th, Emma Kimelainen will be 15th, yesterday's winner, remember, Fabian, uh, Fabian Volvent, who's had a pole position in W Series, starts 16th, Alice Powell 17th, Marta Garcia 18th, 19th is Beitzka Visser and 20th is Jamie Chadwick. Interesting to say it that way round, isn't it, Alan? Even for me, that sounds a little bit odd. 
Yep, 20th in the grid is not something that uh, they have actually had any experience of lately. However, it is one of the things they're going to have today. Well, let's talk about the uh, front then. Megan Giltz, we've mentioned, has got a, a big tough job on her today but not only that Sarah Bovey and Vivian Kesley are really going to be want to be proving that they uh, want this place in the championship as well as we found out yesterday didn't we the top 12 drivers in W Series will automatically get to race next year yes they will and uh, as much as the points or this race doesn't count towards that it is still another opportunity to show what you can do Tasman Pepper she's been quick yesterday but she wasn't able to deliver the results she had a problem there and Sarah Moore now, Sarah was very quick on Friday. She had a grid penalty which dropped her back five places and in the mix. Now, she's someone that I'm quite interested in this afternoon. She qualified in fifth, but had to drop all the way back to tenth in yesterday's race. But like you said, she was fastest in uh, the first, uh, second practice, rather. Yeah, Miki Koyama, she had an accident at the first corner uh, yesterday and she actually hurt her wrist a little bit and there was a little bit of an ice pack on her wrist yesterday, but I think the adrenaline will be flowing today. Emma Kimmelainen, who took the win yesterday, the only mother on the grid, a full-time job already, but is back racing here this weekend. She was sat out two races. She sat out Zolda and Misano on doctor's order. Fabian Volvend as well showed her colours in this championship, taking pole position um, at Misano. Yep, pole position and our first podium in Misano as well a couple of races ago. A circuit that's a little bit more similar to here. Alice Powell, who led a lot of the race yesterday, but was overtaken by Emma Kimmelainen and finished her best result so far, second position. Alice Powell mentioning she had a, a small problem with the car yesterday. Uh, quite a few of the drivers, as you see there, she's got strapping on her wrist. Um, however, it's usually just a precaution. A lot of them are getting blisters on their hands, actually, from the steering wheel and things like that. So that's if you see tape on their hands, that's usually what they have. Marta Garcia there will start um, in 18th. She gives a little high five to her engineer as the grid starts to clear and the formation will start. Uh, formation lap will start very shortly. Bytska Vissa there alongside Jamie Chadwick. Weirdly seeing that whole grid behind them or the spaces for the grid uh, clear. Yeah, and the important thing about this driver is local hero, Baitska Visa, Dutch driver on a Dutch land. She is definitely got her eye. God, look how an intensity in her eyes there, <laughs> non blinking. She's looking one way and that's forward. So Baitska Visa, the home hero, starts from the back. It's a reverse grid of championship points. You don't get any points for this race. It is an experimental race. Uh, the championship wants to see, play around with a few ideas for next season. But for now, this is what they're deciding to do on the second race of the weekend for these drivers. Jamie Chadwick there, the championship leader. She's um, managed to extend her lead last time out with a podium third place yesterday but only by 13 points. So it's Baitska Visser who will take that championship battle with her to Brands Hatch. It's going to be a season finale to remember. So not long until these drivers start on their formation lap. Those two white cars at the back of the, are going to be interesting to watch off the uh, start line, aren't they, Alan? They certainly are. And also, it's 9 o'clock local time here in Holland and Assen, and it's northern Holland, and it's actually a little bit cooler. There's a wind going through. So one factor at this time of the morning is it's going to take a little bit of time to actually get the tyre temperatures and pressures up. And so the first laps are going to be quite tricky, especially for the possibility of locking brakes and locking your inside wheel into the dive down to the first corner. Because this is a start and finish line here in front but it's a long way down to turn one so all eyes on these 20 drivers we've got the two reserve drivers as well alongside megan gilks and the car set off on their formation lap alan what will they find today that will be a little bit different from maybe yesterday it's, it's i mean i've said it's a challenge and you've said it's a challenge for all the drivers and that's absolutely fine but it's going to be a real chance isn't it to show some skill in what they can do here well, there's two things for drivers that, uh, that maybe, like we see, Gilks and Bovey in the front row of the grid. It's to actually deliver a result that they haven't been able to achieve for different reasons through the course of the season. For others, for example, for me, uh, Jessica Hawkins, who has shown fantastic speed but hasn't always been able to convert it in qualifying to deliver the race result. Now she's got a very good chance. I'm interested in Emma Kimmelainen as well. She's now 15th on the grid, but the decisive speed she had yesterday was incredible. Can 
she overtake and deliver a result? I'm not saying that uh, the drivers at this section of the grid now at the back in the back third can win. I don't think they will, but it's where they can get to. So drivers set off on their formation lap. Megan Gilks leading the pack around. They're starting to feel the tyres a little bit, get a bit of warmth in those tyres as we see very much in motorsport, the weaving, don't we, Alan? Yeah, the weaving is one way, side to side, generates the compound. It needs a certain temperature and it reacts to the track, not to the air, and to actually make it grip. The other thing is you can do as a driver is you brake heavily and the temperature from the brake disc goes into the rim, into the tyre, and then it works it from the inside out. And so there's two ways really to warm up the tyre, but this morning I think you really need to do it both as aggressively as possible on this first lap. And the other one is a burnout because the launch off the line is going to be very important for the overtaking down to the first corner. And talk me through the difficult parts of this circuit then. there's a, It's very fast and flowing, but there's a particular corner that could catch a few drivers out and has been. Well, there's a few corners actually in that one. If you look at it, there's three main sectors. The first part of the circuit is actually very long, tightening uh, hairpin bends, and that's where we've just come out of now. Now we're going into the middle sector of the circuit, which has got a very fast 95 miles per hour right-left chicane that leads into the next corner, which is turn 10. Turn 10 caught out a lot of people yesterday. It's uh, officially locally called Maldelvin, but uh, it has got a big curb on exit, and we saw Esme Hockey fly into the air as she hit the edge of the curb when we, she were in qualifying yesterday. And then you come into the next fast and flowing section, and ultimately round uh, the second last corner, which was a flat out 150 miles per hour left hand bend, and then hard breaking into the final chicane. Two main overtaking opportunities, unless it's off opportunistic and that is into the first corner and it's into the last corner well there's blue skies all around here not quite what we saw yesterday when we saw the black clouds coming in and we weren't sure whether we were going to have the first w series wet race however this time around alan it looks like the sun is shining on all these 20 cars as they come around the final few corners to line up and start this reverse grid race it is reversed on championship points however this race has no championship points. However, if they don't finish the race, they will have to take this car into the final round at Brands Hatch. Very interesting with W Series. There's no teams. They share data, they share engineers, and they sh change their cars every single race. It's one of the skill sets a driver has to do is, again, it's that adaptability. Again, this idea of having this non-championship reverse good race showing the requirement for even more adaptability. An important skill set of a driver, as we've said before, as Megan Gilks comes down to take up her pole position. She's on the left-hand side of the grid, on the right, Sarah Bovey. The inside isn't going to be quite as good. The inside line and Bovey's line isn't going to be quite as good uh, for the start, mainly because all the cars take the racing line where Gilks will naturally be. So Megan Gilks pulls into pole position. What will she be feeling right now, Alan? Nerves. Is there a bit of... Is Panic. there nerves? <laughs> yeah. But there's also <laughs> the point of focus and intense uh, concentration because probably for her the first 20 seconds of the race are going to be the most important. Can she get a good launch off the line? Can she react to the, the lights? And can she also defend her position into the first corner? She's leading. She's in pole position. She's got the best spot. On the other side, Jamie Chadwick lining up last on the grid, and she's got one of the most difficult tasks as well to get through, but the risk and reward. The green flag is waved at the back of the grid. We're ready to go racing in Assen. Let's see what Megan Gilts can do from the front of the grid. The lights will go out, and they're out. They are and out, and Sabra Cook has had a brilliant start going up the other side of the grid. Megan Gilks is on her own going into turn one. There's Sarah Bovey has had quite a bad start, actually, but Sabra Cook has moved all the way up, but she's just moving down to fourth now. So, actually, Megan Gilks has had a brilliant start and has moved off quite fast into the distance. A bit of bump behind, but uh, looks like everyone's got through quite cleanly. Everyone's got through cleanly, but Gilks disappeared at the start. She got a fantastic... Fantastic launch, led into the first corner easily, but Moore, as you said, uh, was 
really quick off the line. I think there's, I think they'll be having a little look at that because she seemed to react so quickly. Sorry, Saber Cook, apologies. She reacted so quickly to the lights. However, it's all action as they come down to the very fast chicane there. Vivian Gesley is under pressure from Jess Hawkins there, looking to see if she can find a way, but hard defending from the Hungarian driver, nodding allowing Jessica Hawkins to get through. Jessica Hawkins, like we said, has been very, very strong in uh, practice sessions and qualifying, so she will be putting the pressure on Vivian Kesley in front of her, one of the reserve drivers. She's not driven every single race here, but it's Megan Gilks who leads this reverse championship order race. Sarah Bovey is still in second. Let's see how all the rest pan out. See what's happened at the back there. Who is now, so Chadwick has made her way up three places. And Visser, I think, is a little bit up ahead of her as well. So Visser and Chadwick already making their way through the grid, up about four or five places as the leaders come through to end the first lap. And uh, you can see there's a... Crikey, there's cars going everywhere at this moment. <laughs> It's too much for me to take in right now early in the morning. 28 minutes on the clock. It is a 30-minute race plus one lap. It is Megan Gilks who leads from Sarah Bovey. Sabra Cook, after her brilliant start, made her way up to third. Vivian Kessley, fourth, is behind. But it's uh, Jessica Hawkins who is putting pressure now on Vivian Kessley to try and get past. Esme Hawkey is fifth. Uh, Jess Hawkins, it's saying there, is actually she's lost a position now. Jess Hawkins to Esme Hawkey, says the timing screen. So let's see what our eyes can physically see. Shea Holbrook is seventh. Tasman Pepper is eighth. Alice Powers moved her way up to ninth. She must have had an electric start, and Naomi Schiff is tenth. Some very, very opportunistic overtakes there in the hairpin by Tasman Pepper there, as she's managed to sort of just nick ahead as they're going three abreast into the chicane. Now it's going to be two abreast, oh. and Powell's coming down the inside. So Alice Powell, after second place yesterday, she said she was going to take it quite calmly today. I don't think she's actually following through with her ideas because she's already getting stuck in there. So Alice Powell moves up from ninth. She started all the way back in 17th in the grid. So she's definitely said, yeah, she did say she's coming into this race. She was going to have quite a, a calm race and just make sure she got round. But it seems that she is on a, an absolute charge here in this reverse non-championship point race. So Marta Garcia still battling a little bit at the back there, but it's Megan Gilks who still leads, and she's got quite a comfortable lead at the moment. Yes, Gilks over Bovey over Cook, and then there's a two-second gap back to Kesley, and so the first three have actually stretched the lead a little bit, and then you've got the battles that are going on from there. I think it always oh, someone's run very wide coming through the left-hander into the final chicane. Uh, I think no harm done because you've got the pit entry there, but uh, as you see, Visser now is making an attack just in the slipstream, looking down the inside into the first corner. She is indeed, and she gets that move done and up a position. So she started at the back of the grid and she has moved her way up past, I think, Vicky Piria and up to uh, 13th now. It's going to take a few laps for it to settle down, but there's been a heck of a lot of action as you've now got Visser and Chadwick that are just following each other through. And in fact, Chadwick, I think, is just waiting for Visser to make the moves to actually do things and then to follow through, which is quite clever way of driving here. As you see the two of them dancing into the chicane. In fact, now Chadwick's looking round the outside into the chicane. This is 95 miles per hour, and she can't get it done, and she's got to lift off, and Visser keeps the position. And they have to be very careful here because they have to take this car into Brands Hatch, and this is the car that they need to win a championship with. So if they're taking each other off or battling a little bit too hard in this race, they're going to have a lot of work to do to stick with that car heading into Brands Hatch. But you also have the fact of the mental battle as well. <laughs> From Visser's point of view, she wants to say, hey, if you want to win the championship in Brands, if you want to get, win this race, you've got to come past me. And Chadwick's on the other side of it saying, I am coming past you. Right now, it's Visser leading this mental and physical battle over Chadwick. It'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. Visser down in 14th, Chadwick down in 15th. Fabian Volvent has set uh, the fastest lap so far of the race. Megan Gilks, who leads here from Sarah Bovey, from Sabra Cook in third. Vivian Kesley is fourth. Fifth is Esme Hawkey. And sixth is Jessica Hawkins. That start was electric by Sabre Cook to get herself up into third position. And uh, she really got herself off the line and put herself into a strong place. She's 3.6 seconds back now. 
Jamie Chapwick looked a little bit to see if she could try and get round Baitskavissa. Uh, Baitskavissa defended hard and not allowing, basically making her car the biggest car on the track as she makes a small mistake there and, and goes a little bit uh, goes a little bit onto the gravel. So that battle will continue as always, as we've seen throughout this whole W Series championship, these two battling away. Yeah, Kimmelainen just up ahead of Piria as well in this battle, and she's just overtaken. And so now it's, uh, it, this is at the area where Chadwick was quicker. Yesterday he is, Visser looks down the inside, can't quite get it done, compromises herself a little bit. And this is Chadwick's looking down the inside now. In fact, Visser's gone for it. There's four cars here diving. Chadwick has gone round the outside of turn 11 and there's been a little bit of a nudge. Is she going to hold the inside line? She's Able holding to do it. She's holding the inside line and she takes it from Visser and that's one towards the championship. But Visser's coming back on her. The side by side going into the corner. Can Visser do it? No, she pushes. She nudges Chadwick out. This battle is incredible. If they're not going to be careful though, Fabian Volven's going to take Chadwick here. And then going into this corner now, let's see who's coming out on top. And it looks like it could have been Baitska Visser. Jamie Chadwick now side by side with Fabian Volven and they're putting a lot of pressure on the side. She's going to, have to be careful not to touch there. And Fabian Volvin has done it. Extra pressure from Jamie Chadwick. Has Jamie Chadwick got a problem here? Because nope. Caitlin Wood looks like... No, she's not. She got, she got blocked she got and blocked. had to slow out the corner. So Wood right down the outside. And uh, then Chadwick's had to defend. So as Chadwick was Ooh, trying to wide. attack... Uh, then she's actually now lost three places as Wood's gone down the inside into turn three, not able to get it done. No, Chadwick comes back on her and, and seems to get uh, everything back into order there. But you're right, she got blocked by Fabian Volven going around. Let's see the replay here, Alan. This is much earlier in the lap where Chadwick's gone round the outside, Visser's ran out to the edge, and then they're side by side. Chadwick is through at this moment, but Visser's done the cut back, and Chadwick hangs on, hangs on, hangs on onto the curb. And look at Volven in the purple car to the right hand side she now positions herself in the slipstream this is the 150 miles an hour uh, left hander into the final chicane and then she overtakes Chadwick on our right here Chadwick has to defend breaks up and that allows the run from Wood and the yellow car behind down the start and finish straight and Garcia's there ready to pick up the pieces if they fall her way so the winner of that one was Bites Gavissa behind uh, Fabian Volvin who got past Jamie Chadwick and Caitlin Wood also involved in that Something happened to Sarah Moore, though, who has moved all the way down to 19th, and Koyama had a bad start as well. It'll be interesting to see what happened to Sarah Moore, who started in the mid-pack. She started 10th. Here's the replay of the start then, Alan. Look at the car there. Cook electric off the line very, very quickly as Gilks on the right-hand side gets a fantastic launch, but it was Cook in the yellow car now in the middle that really was the first one to get their clutch off and the throttle down right on the limit, whether that would have been a jump start. As a few cars ran wide over the curbs and then having to get it back. Yeah, it was a great start there by Sabra Cook. She took a very interesting line going into the first corner. So interesting to see there in the middle, if you see the yellow car, Megan Gilks go through, but it's that yellow car there in the middle of the pack of Sabra Cook, who really got a good start. She went down to about third, fourth at that point and actually manages to get back into the game. And I assume that's part of Vivian Kesley and moves her way up to third place. So determined to get a podium here, fastest lap then set by Fabian Volvent. Well, Volvent has really got the bit between her teeth today. Yesterday, she was there at the races, but not quite there in the way that we'd normally have expected after Misano and also Norris Ring. But today, she's going for it. She's looking down the inside of Visser now, down into turn 12. Fabian Volvent, who got pole position round Misano, had a slow start, and Jamie Chadwick took the win there. However, she got her first podium. She was unhappy with her performance yesterday after picking up some damage and having to have a front wing changed, which put her down all the way in 15. Vicky Piria makes her way past Naomi Schiff for 12th and 11th, but it's Megan Gilks who still leads here. Megan Gilks, who had to sit out a race in Norris Ring, but returned for Assen has got quite a comfortable lead at the moment from Sarah Bovey. And just behind her is Sabra Cook. Another good lead there as well. Battle here continues between Vivian Kesley and Jessica Hawkins. As we look further down, Naomi Schiff. I think this is looking to get round Shay Holbrook there as well, but she's under pressure from Fabian Volvent. Interesting to see the bottom of the uh, pack, Allen, as it stands with the championship orders 
changing. There seems to be a lot more battling going on at the back. Yes, there is. There's a lot of action there. But remember, that's where the faster drivers were when they started off in terms of championship order. But what seems to be the case is that the fast drivers yesterday are not the ones that are really making the charge, except I have to say Alice Powell is now up into seventh position. As we see Visser going down the inside, and uh, that's his uh, chicane not quite able to get it done on Shea Holbrook. Holbrook had a very difficult yesterday. She's trying to really make up for it today. She, I spoke to her a lot yesterday, and she was on the attack. This was a great opportunity for her, and she's now got the leaders of the championship right behind her. She's holding up the pack a little bit, though, so Beitzkevissa, Fabian Volbend, and Jamie Chadwick starting to make a little train just behind Holbrook. Can Visser get past and release the pack? We'll find out very shortly. Beitzkevissa... Is it, it's an interesting to see Bites Gumissa, isn't it? Because her driving is, is not, it's, it's quite aggressive, but aggressive to a, to a good point, isn't it? She, she, if she tries to make a move, she does tend to commit to it, doesn't she? Well, you do really do in this situation. You've got to really commit to it or you're not going to get the job done, especially in that battle where she is at the moment as uh, we come down the start finish straight and you see the stream of cars coming through and we've got Visser, Chadwick, Volven, three of the main protagonists this season, all nose to tail as they're now coming down in, behind uh, Shea Holbrook into the first corner. Holbrook a little bit loose, the rear of the car dancing around behind her as she braked and turned into there, runs a touch wide, but it's not going to allow any of opportunity she now comes into the tight long 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 hairpin right hander and then into the slowest corner 30 miles per hour 50 kilometer per hour left hand hairpin out into the fast part of the circuit and Fabian Volven looks again to see if she can get bites Kavissa but what was really interesting there into that corner as we watch this battle continue with Holbrook and Visser, the different line that Holbrook took into that corner actually is, oh, Visser's making the move in the inside of the circuit, but she's not going to do it there because there's not enough space. But from the back, Fabian Volvend is now under pressure from Jamie Chadwick. Jamie Chadwick not able to make it happen there. She looks to the inside, she looks uh, to the outside first, then inside, but she can't do it there either. So this battle is going to continue further down. This is for 15th, 16th. Uh, well, for 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th, Chadwick is the final in that little battle. Yeah, they're basically, Chadwick is looking round the outside into the fast chicane as we've oh. now got Kesley and Hawkins. Hawkins is up another position, up into fourth place. Hawkins has got past Kesley as now Kesley is under attack as well. 150 miles per hour through the left-hander into the final chicane. Is Kesley going to go down another position? Alice Looks Powell. Like coming up oh and they touch they touch Alice Powell pushes Vivian Kesley off the track is that going to be Alice's fault or was that just a racing instant Alan will find out but Alice Powell gets the move done and moves up to fifth place after starting way back in 17th she's overtaken 12 cars so far this has been an excellent oh, spinner oh that's spinner. Vivian Vivian Kesley has been spun I think and I'm not sure she did that on her own yeah it's definitely Vivian Kesley she lost the back end as it standard I think Alan coming out of turn one she's just been overtaken a couple of cars corners back and she lost the rear end of the car, spun around, a little bit of lock. We'll hopefully see that again through turn one. Vivian Kesley, who is fighting for fifth position, is now right down at the back of the grid. So let's find out what happened to Vivian Kesley as we see uh, Holbrook and Visser once again going side by side. Can Visser get this done? She's going to get it done. She's got the advantage here. Holbrook hasn't quite got the straight line speed. Visser's got it. All oh, the battle goes down to that corner and Vivian does it. Shea Holbrook goes wide. She goes into the runoff area, so she's going to lose a couple of positions. She's going to lose three or four positions there as now Volvend has also followed her through. Now uh, she's on the outside Holbrook and that's going to allow Chadwick to have another attack. But Visser up another position. Here we get the replay, I think, of the turn one. So this will be ah. Vivian Kesley. She was on the rumble strips on the outside. You saw the two big yellow lines there, which is basically like an, a raised concrete section. And this is at the previous chicane where she had the tap with Alice Powell. That's a wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing incident, in my opinion. And then down at the next uh, corner, she got onto the rumbles and slid wide and oversteered round. This is again at the last chicane. It was basically, look, this is a non-championship race. You're going at it. And so you're basically, all cars are over the curbs. They're fighting wheel to wheel. They're going at it aggressively. And that was an aggressive overtake by Alice Powell. Mm. But that overtaking has put her up now to fifth place and chasing Hawkins. Holbrook out of the race then. She's in the gravel. So her race is over. She didn't have a great race yesterday either. Wanted to see if she could have a, a better race today, but she's in the gravel. Whereabouts is that? Safety car is out. 
halfway through the race now and the safety car is out. She's off at the far end of the circuit, so what this will do is bunch everybody up again. So Gilt, Bovey and Cook, they had a big lead, eight seconds over Jess Hawkins. That lead will now go down to zero and everybody's actions again. Now, this really changes the dynamic, Claire, for me, because we saw Hawkins push her way through. We saw Powell with her elbows out as we see the safety car there waiting on the race leader, Gilks, coming round. And we've now also got that big battle between Visser, Volend and Chadwick, which is actually still only in 12th, 13th and 14th. And they're coming through. Shea Holbrook pulls her gloves off, frustrations and annoyance, and uh, she'll be walking back to the pits. Bad day in in the office again for Shea Holbrook. Here's the replay, Alan. Yeah, she gets onto the curbs. Those curbs have been very aggressive for everybody. We saw that with uh, Kesley earlier on, and she spins round and then reverses back. Now you need to put on the brakes, brake, brake, brake. And she doesn't, she allows the car to go into the gravel trap. Once you're in there, the belly of the car is stuck and the wheels are effectively in there and there's no way you're going to go. Unless you've got a four wheel drive car, you ain't gonna get out of there. Well. She made history by becoming the first woman to win a major uh, at Long Beach in JP, a major touring car race at Long Beach in 2011. And she's also a seven-time Pirelli Challenge winner. So she's got a lot of history under her belt, but unfortunately this weekend, not for her. She actually grew up as a, a national water skier at a national level. Fun fact for you there. 13 minutes left on the clock. Safety car is out after uh, Shea Holbrook made her way into the gravel. She's out of this race. Megan Gilks leads. Sarah Bovey is in second. And we see Saybrook Cook in third as it stands. Safety car is in this lap. So the racing will continue very shortly. Didn't take them long to get that car out of the gravel. So that's good to see. Jess Hawkins makes her way up to fourth. Alice Powell has had a brilliant race so far. Like I said, she started 17th on the grid. She's fourth in the championship at the moment, and she has carved her way through up to fifth place. Shea Holbrook then wanders back to the pits. Frustrating for her, Alan, isn't it? Yes, it is frustrating. It's been a tricky year for her so far, and uh, she's not had the best of times around here in Assen. Yesterday wasn't a good day, today's not a good day, and it's going to be quite a long flight her, for her back to the US. But time to recover mentally in preparation for the final rounds of this championship in Brands Hatch in a few weeks' time. Yep, we head to Brands Hatch for the final race. The championship will be decided. The inaugural W Series champion will be crowned. Will it be Jamie Chabwick? Will it be the home hero round here, Bites Kavissa? We've gone from Bites Kavissa's home to Jamie Chadwick's home. So one of them will be crowned. Come the race, safety car is in this lap. Sarah Bo um, Megan Gilks will start to push them all back a little bit. This will be a, another challenge for her to see a safety car restart. Not only has she been able to hold this for the whole race, but she's now lost that gap that she had, Alan. Yes, and it's also an opportunity for others. It's pressure for Gilks and Bovey to try to keep the advantages they've had. They're in new territory right now, leading in second with 11 minutes to go, as uh, they've got two more corners before they actually get to the start-finish line. But for Hawkins and Powell, this is a real opportunity to grab a maybe unexpected win a couple of weeks, a couple of hours, sorry, a couple of minutes ago, not even hours ago. <laughs> well, here we go. Megan Gilks will get on the throttle and she'll restart this race now and it's not the fastest restart and it looks like Hawkins is going to put pressure on Sabre and Cook there. Yes, is it she? is. And yes, she is. She's going on the outside the and there could be a change for the lead. Sarah Bovey knows it on the inside there. Actually, Megan Gilks makes a big mistake there, comes off the circuit, manages to keep the lead, but they're side by side going into that corner. Has Sarah Bovey done it? No, she hasn't. And Sabra Cook has also kept her position. So it's as it is, Megan Gilks, then it's Sarah Bovey, then it's Sabra Cook, then it's Jessica Hawkins. So Gilks under huge pressure there from Sarah Bovey, who wants to prove herself in this championship. She's a reserve driver. They go side by side again. Can Sarah Bovey do it there? Round the outside, it's going to be hard. Nope, Megan Gilks keeps it, but Jessica Hawkins behind also putting pressure on Sabra Cook as uh, I don't think that move is going to work again, but Sarah Bovey is determined, isn't she, to try and get the cut back. Yeah, but she's putting her a little bit offline, so she's compromising her exit for the next corner, and so as Chadwick looks to have gone through another position, then it uh, is back to the lead, and Gilks has still got it in place. The person that was very slow at the restart was Alice Powell. She missed it by a mile, but now Powell's back in the game as Cook looks to the inside, but it's Bovey that goes 
goes wide and she's wide, wide, wide. She's going to lose a position there, I think, to Saber Cook as Cook now goes round the outside of the next one. And you've also got. My goodness, Jessica that was Hawkins behind, so Saber Cook is up into second place. Sarah Bovey moves down to third. Jessica Hawkins is now putting the pressure on Sarah Bovey. Rodesta's moved up to sixth, gone past Tasman Pepper, but it's Powell who had the strong, uh, a slow start rather, and will remain in fifth. She could have seen if she could have got a bit of a jump there. However, the all of the pack is starting to shake out a little bit now on this restart as we see a couple of. Uh, lunges going on a little bit further in the back, but nothing to talk about at the moment. Megan um, Sabra Cook again is under pressure from Sarah Bovey, but it's actually Jessica Hawkins that looks into that first corner, and that is a good move, and it's done. She's up to third place. It's a podium position as it stands at the moment, and Sarah Bovey is now under pressure from Alice Powell. Hawkins, that was a very, very good decisive move. Bovey was looking at it. Al uh, Hawkins did it, and now Hawkins is right on the back of Sabre Cook. So as Gilks, who I think is oh, driving out Pepper. of her skin at the moment, yeah. is now 1.1 seconds up the road from Cook and Hawkins. However, I think that gap is going to close down quite quickly because that's two very determined drivers behind. Another side-by-side -side going on there. Lots of moving. Tasman Pepper seems to be trying to find every position as Alice Powell gets round Sarah Bovey, and that's quite an easy move, sort of where uh, the last move happened for Tasman Pepper seems to be moving backwards actually a little bit now uh, as Emma Kimmelainen seems to have got past her. So I don't know if uh, there's a problem for Tasman Pepper or if it was done on the track. Kimmelainen now looking to see if she can get round Gosia Redest and it might be an easy move actually because Gosia Redest has gone a bit wide and she's through and she might lose another position there to Tasman Pepper but closes the door. So Emma Kimmelainen moves up to uh, sixth, I believe it should be now on position. Alice Powell will come under pressure from her next. As Tasman Pepper now under pressure from Naomi Schiff and a couple of other drivers from behind. Volvend and Chadwick are in that mix as well as you've got four or five cars that are side by side coming into the left-hander towards the final chicane. And it's Volvend that's leading Chadwick purple to white if you look in the middle of that. And Volvend's looking down the inside of Piria and she's going to get it done, I think. Oh, that's it's late. Oh, late on the braking, sorry. Fabian Volvend was very late and actually she loses the position and gets caught up with one of the drivers behind. Something has just flown off the front of that car as well. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what happened there. The battle there just behind that's got about six, seven, eight, nine different cars in it at the moment is uh, fascinating to watch. So Megan Gilks is still leading. The battle continues here between Jessa Hawkins and uh, Sabra Cook, Jessica Hawkins trying to get up to second place. And Hawkins has now lined her up perfectly as she's accelerated out of the hairpin, down to the fast chicane. Cook's defending the inside oh, two cars, Volvend and Resist are stuck at the hairpin at five. They've collected each other, but Hawkins is going to get this done into the chicane, and she does. Hawkins up to second place, Cook down to third, Powell there in fourth, ready to pick up the pieces. Hawkins up to second then, now uh, she's got seven minutes to try and chase down Megan Gilks. Can she get a win here? And she's looking very strong like she might. Jessica Hawkins, who, let's not forget, started seventh on the grid, and she carved her way through as Gosia Redest ends up in the gravel after that contact with Fabian Volven. There's a safety car now back out with six and a half minutes left on the clock, and there is something pouring out the back of her car. Yeah, that's just the overflow pipe. Don't worry about that. I think the bigger <laughs> problem is she's actually in the gravel. Here we see it again, and uh, as you can see there, that Pepper went down the inside, and it looked to be a little, maybe a little nudge to Redest, oh. to spin her around and then we had this little bit of a sympathy spin I would say behind her in that respect and in fact no I think she actually just looked it on her own when I see that quick replay I'd like to see it once more if possible Mr Director <laughs> there <laughs> Yeah, so Gosia Rodez gets spun round by Sarah Bovey. It looks like there might have been a bit of a touch. And then for behind that, on their own, Fabian Volven gets spun round by... I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure she did no? or whether okay. it was just... Because when cars are going everywhere, yeah. you react. And that corner is very difficult. But for Rodez, she's the big loser out of this. And she's now dropped down. She was in the top six as now the safety car picks up Gilks. Hawkins in second. Cook, Powell. Then Kimmelainen. Kimmelainen's now came through from 15th on the grid over to... Taking 10 cars up to fifth. She's sort of been secretly moving forward, yeah. kind of undercover, if you like, yeah. but she's now in a good position with Powell and Cook just ahead of her. Gilks is under pressure now. Megan Gilks will be another safety car. Is probably not what she wanted at this point. Of course, the safety car backs them all up. So Megan Gilks lead. Jess Hawkins second. Sabra Cook third. Alice Powell fourth. Emma Kimmelainen has moved up to fifth. Tasman Pepper is sixth. Sarah Bovey seventh, Naomi Schiff is eighth. So here's the replay. This is the restart 
of the previous one. Look at Bovey going down the inside and then the black and yellow behind going round outside. Bovey doesn't get it done, but Hawkins does as uh, there's a lot of action. Both of them running really wide. Track limits, forget track limits. That's beyond the track that's in another country just about. But then behind them, you've got Hawkins who made it through. There's the other move here on f uh, Chadwick and Visser going off the circuit to try and avoid a car that had come I think off. there was a touch there actually to uh, to actually cause the car to spin, and okay. that's into the long right-hander. This has been an amazingly exciting and aggressive and overtaking race, much more than I honestly expected. You know, yesterday's race was a... It was basically reasonably understandable. However, for this one, it has been absolutely flat out and gung-ho. Sarah Bovey is under investigation for causing a collision. So let's see what yes. happens there as uh, Gautia Redest gets out of the car. Oh, that's that shoulders down, isn't it? Head helmet still on we all know what that means with the driver well, either helmet's... they can't be bothered to carry it or no <laughs> helmet still, still on, on means it's yeah. better because inside it's fumes that are coming out of the <laughs> yeah. ears i've honestly had that feeling myself on many occasions as now with three minutes and 35 seconds to go they're going to have i think probably you know a couple of lap dash towards the line of this non-championship race three and a half minutes plus one lap the safety car will come in soon as Gautier Redest is out. So hopefully we'll get a little sprint to the end. We'll see what Jessica Hawkins can do in second place. And Megan Gilks is going to have to be on her game this time because she's got a very, very fast driver behind her. So let's see what happens on the replay. Three and a half minutes left. They still follow around the safety car now. A replay here of Jessica Hawkins getting... Uh, a little bit offline to get the move done on Sabre Cook, Alan. Well, she basically wasn't going to take no for an answer in that <laughs> one. Cook squeezed her towards the grass, gave her enough room. Hawkins just took a little bit of grass there on the inside, bounced over, but actually delivered it. Now, is she going to be able to do it on the restart? We're getting round to the other side of the circuit. We'll see the lights on the safety car hopefully going out this time. When they extinguish, the drivers will know they've got half a lap to prepare for the restart. And then it's Gilks's, I would say, final opportunity to win or final risk point as well. If she can actually hold it into the first corner and hold it to the rest of the lap, it's going to be tough for Hawkins to be able to, to overtake her. She's led this race all the way till now. It would be so tough for her if she wasn't able to convert it to a victory. She has had a great race. She has had two safety car restarts after this one. Can she hold on to the lead? Can she win round here? Can she stand on the top of the podium? Well, we'll find out very shortly with the pressure from Jessica Hawkins behind Sabre Cook and Alice Powell as not counting out Emma Kimmelainen at this point at the safety as the restart. Safety car is in this lap then. A replay of Gosha Rodesk getting out of the car. Frustrated. Uh, she's actually pointing at one of the drivers as they go round. So I'm not sure if she had it coming together with somebody. I think you thought she'd lost it on her own, but drivers it's love to do to that, see. don't they? It's difficult to see. <laughs> I'll put it like this. I never accepted blame until I had to. The safety car <laughs> lights are now out. So now Gilks is in control. Right behind her, you've got Hawkins. And then behind her, you've got Cook and Powell and Kimmelainen and Pepper. Now, crikey me, that is one very, very attacking end of the race. And you've now got Gilks who's gone. And she's now accelerated as she comes towards the final chicane. She has indeed, and she restarts this race, and Hawkins is actually a little bit slow. I don't know if she was caught napping there. She puts the throttle down. Megan Gilks under pressure. Jessica Hawkins trying to see if she can go on the outside of the start finish straight. Inside, outside, can she do it? She's not going to do it there. She's a little bit too far back, but Alice Powell, meanwhile, has moved up to third place. She gets around Sabra Cook. Sabra Cook now comes together a little bit with Emma Kimmelainen under pressure once again, as yesterday's winner really wants to see if she can move up to another position, but Alice Powell up to third now. The move Move for the lead is still not quite able to do it. Hawkins can't do it there. Round the outside, Megan Gilks keeps it, but will she get the comeback? This is exactly what she did before to Cook, and she was able to deliver it down this straight. She's now in the slipstream. Gilks goes to the inside to defend. Hawkins will look to the inside, but I think she'll have to go to the outside. But she does. She goes for it into the skin, pulls oh, back. Oh, she needed to commit to that one if she's going to do this. She's got 12 seconds left on the clock, and that will click down, and they'll get another lap on top of that. So can Hawkins get 
past Megan Gilks here. And she's putting the pressure on. And this is a lot for this youngest driver, Megan Gilks, on the grid. She's looking on the outside. No, nope, she's not going to do it there. There's so much pressure. Megan Gilks is the youngest driver on the grid. Oh, and she really forces an error there. And she's going to do it into here. No, she's not. The problem for Hawkins is that she's now got Powell right on her gearbox. So she goes out of line. Then Powell's there to pick up the pieces. And Powell's quick. And Powell's looking to the outside. This is the outside going towards 100. And she's done it. Powell's through into second place. She Cook is now through into third. And so you've now got a situation where Hawkins is down to fifth place. Emma Kimmelainen got through in fourth there. So a real mistake from Jess Hawkins has cost her not only the podium, but she's moved down to fifth. So now it's Megan Gilks, Alice Powell from uh, Sabre Cook, from Emma Kimmelainen. Kimmelainen, but Sabra Cook's now coming under pressure from Emma Kimmelainen. What is going to happen here? Kimmelainen comes down and Kimmelainen is going to take third place into the first corner. Decisive, late breaking, Kimmelainen up to third. So Ooh. now, as Kimmelainen runs wide and drops down to fourth, Cook back through. Is Hawking going to follow her through as well? Hawkins now looks to the inside and pushes her way past Kimmelainen. Hawkins is not finished yet. And Chadwick has moved all the way up to eighth. We missed that in all the move of the safety car, and is she going to do it? But no. Kim Linens came back past Hawkins in the hairpin. Kim Linens redone Hawkins, but Powell on guilt. Is Powell going to come from the back and win this race? Powell under putting the pressure on Megan Gilt. She looks on the outside. It's the final lap. She's got to do it in the next couple of corners if she wants to win this race and take it from Megan Gilt. Elsewhere behind, Sabra Cook in third. Emma Kim Linen, here she goes. Not going to do it there. No, she's not. This is turn 10, and then it leads into another left hander. So Powell's trying to get a run down into it, and then there's a breaking opportunity into here, and Powell goes for it. No, she doesn't. Ooh. Gilt blocks her across very, very well. That was decisive by Gilt, and nice stuff. Now she's got to be careful, because Powell's looking round outside to get the momentum. This is where she overtook Hawkins on the previous lap, but she doesn't get the real opportunity. She oh. maybe has, but Powell's now run wide and got the momentum. She can't quite get through, can she? She can't get past the youngest driver on the grid, but she's on her gearbox. She's almost touching Megan Gilks. Can she get past? Can she take the win here? I think she's going to run out of time. It could be Megan Gilks that's going to do this. As they battle behind, but Powell's got to run on her. Powell's got to run on her she's out the final corner. Is she going to do this? It's going to be a photo finish, but I think that was Megan Gilks who takes the win in the reverse grid. Alice Powell is second, but look at that time. She puts so much pressure on the young 18 year old, but it's Megan Gilks who wins the W Series race in Assen. No points, however, that'll feel pretty sweet, I'm sure. Sabra Cook comes through in third. Emma Kimmelainen in fourth. Jessica Hawkins has to settle for fifth in the end. Tasman Pepper is sixth. Naomi Schiff is seventh. Eighth is Jamie Chadwick. Ninth is Vicky Piria. And tenth is Sarah Moore. Looking at the out of the top ten, Sarah Bovey, Fabian Volva, and Marta Garcia. Uh, Baitska Visser ends up 14th. Mickey Koyama 15th. Esme Hawkey 16th. Vivian Kesley is 17th and Fabian Volvend 18th. Out of the race, Redest and Shay Holbrook. I have to give a lot of credit to Megan Gilks because, wow, I've that, she, that finish. She was stunning today. Megan Gilk started from pole position because she's last in the championship. This is the final corner, and she was a little bit slow out. Powell got a real drive. This is full motorcycle spec. We're at a motorcycle circuit. The big drive to the line, but Gilks won it by a nose. On the timing monitors, it is 0.0, .0 but it was Gilks that actually just got this final, final. She ran touch, touch wide. And that gave Powell the last chance oh. to accelerate across the line, but Gilks got it done. Pole position led to safety car restarts yep. and then won the race. I have to tip my hat off. She is my driver of the day. And there's a lot of drivers in the race. I was going to say, because you can't count out Alice Powell as the driver of the day. She started 17th on the grid. Chadwick had a good race in the end, the championship leader, making her way up to 8th from the back of the grid. She was started 20th, so she battled through well. But you've got to say, Gilks, fantastic. Two safety car restarts, youngest driver on the grid, 18 years old and she takes the win in W Series for race two. Like I said, no championship points for this race, but that's a big statement. And that's your winner, Megan Gilks from Canada. Superb, superb drive, superb race. And we've got to remember, this is non-championship, but it's also a, uh, a trial to see what can happen.
There you go. The point between Alice Powell and Megan Giltz is so tiny, but it's Megan Giltz who wins. Alice Powell second, Sabre Cook third, Emma Kimmeline in fourth, Hawkins fifth, Pepper sixth, Schiff is seventh, uh, Jamie Chadwick came from 20th to finish eighth, Vicky Peary at ninth, and Sarah Moore, after dropping to the back of the grid, also finishes 10th. Sarah Bovey then 11th, Caitlin Wood 12th, Marta Garcia 13th, Bites Kavissa uh, had to settle for 14th, Miki Koyama 15th, Esme Hawkey 16th, Kesley Volvent, and then Gosia Radest and Shea Holbrook were out of this race. That's that, all I've got to say for that. That was a <laughs> stunning race, a stunning experiment to see what happens if you reverse yep. a complete grid. We got, I would have said, some expected results in terms of certain drivers coming through and unexpected results as well. In, for me, honestly, the winner. The winner, I think, Megan Gilt was brilliant today. She showed her talent, she showed strength under pressure, and we have to remember this is a very young driver in terms of experience, and she can be super happy. In fact, the podium can be super happy, but I think this was a superb race. She's a very quiet and reserved driver, Megan Gilks, but all of the drivers like her and say that she's a, a lovely person as she gives Sabre Cook there a nice hug, the Canadian Megan Gilks, the American Sabre Cook, and the only Brit on the podium this time round is going to be Alice Powell waving to everybody there second yesterday second today yeah. very very different race though yesterday it was all about the run to the first corner and then the battle for the lead with Kim Alainen. today it's about the battle from the back of the grid 17th overtaking 15 cars to fight for the lead of the race going across the line Sarah Bovey missed out then Bovey so. was on the front row and she dropped down to 11. She was fighting for the lead as well. There's so many that could have been involved in this fight. Hawkins is another one that was there and just because of the way it went, got shuttled back very slightly. So let's head down and hear from our winner, Megan Gilks. Oh, wow. So we've got a very, very happy uh, winner here, Megan Gilks. Congratulations. I just heard you saying you can't even believe it. I mean, what does it feel like at the moment? I honestly never thought I would win an F3 race and to win a W Series race, this means the world to me. I am so happy that I could not have imagined a better day. And you know what? I mean, the pressure was just growing on you and yet you kept your calm. And I mean, we had two safety car phases and everything and you just really kept your calm. You did such a phenomenal job. How proud are you? I'm so, so happy right now. Yeah, after the first safety car, I thought, oh no. I, I had a bit of a gap, to, I think it was to Sarah. And I thought, oh man, really right now? But then um, I, I think I got a bit of a gap again after the uh, safety car restart. Then another safety car came, so I had another oh no moment. But then I just, once those last couple of laps started, I was trying to defend for my life. So I was just so happy to, to make it to the end and to finish first. Well, enjoy the moment. You really did a phenomenal job. Thank you so much, Megan. And now back to Alan and Claire. Verena, thank you very much. And that was a fantastic interview down there. And it's so good to hear the enthusiasm of driver. And she said she was defending for her life. She was defending for her life. But also that told me that she has got a lot of potential in this championship as well going forward. What a fascinating race. So many talking points. Yep, there's no championship points, but I'm sure we're going to have some interesting points coming into Brands Hatch and the confidence that Megan Gilks is going to get and Sabra Cook as well, both being on the podium. Alice Powell finally gets rid of this car. She has had it for two, three races now. This is her third race. So just to explain that, you lose your, you change your car every single time, but it's Megan Gilks who is the winner here, the young Canadian we've just heard from. And she was very, very happy and very pleased, 18 years old. I think that must have been the longest 32 minutes of <laughs> Megan Gilks's life. And I think that run out to the final corner to the checkered flag was the longest 100 yards, 100 meters of hers. But she's still going to be smiling. I can guarantee you when she touches <laughs> down in Canada, she's still going to be smiling with a big W Series trophy and a very deserved W Series trophy to go with it. So everyone will uh, change their cars for Brands Hatch, apart from Gosia Radest and Shea Holbrook in the very unique way that W Series makes sure it's completely fair. And the drivers, if they don't finish the race, have to keep their car, which is a, a brilliant way of doing it. So podium getting underway very shortly. First out is uh, Sabra Cook for third place. 
And you saw there that Alice Powell was just saying it looked like it was about yeah. maybe 10 millimetres the difference between first and second. She'll be annoyed at herself, I'm sure, knowing Alice Powell. She'll say she wished she could have got the win, but she'll take a second place, I'm sure. Sabra Cook then comes out, gets her first podium in W Series. Catherine Bonmieu, the CEO of W Series, hands over the trophy to the third place winner. Third place driver, rather. You can't win from third place, but you know what I mean. Alice Powell comes out, second place driver. Big cheer for our Alice Powell. Now the podium for the Brit, very experienced driver. She receives her trophy. Smiles all round then. I have to applaud Megan Gilks on this one because it's such a difficult race for her to be able to do that and you can see the happiness as she collects her trophy. The 18-year-old stands on the top step of the podium, the only Canadian driver in the championship, the youngest driver in the championship as well. Let's hear the national anthem of the winning driver. The Canadian anthem. Megan Giltz gets an extended version of the uh, Canadian national anthem there. Such a happy national anthem, isn't it? I always want to sing along. I only know two words, but uh, anyway. Chanel, the champagne is going to flow. And Alice is straight into Megan Giltz and soaks her, basically. She needs a little bit more practice at that in terms of shaking the champagne, but... With performances like today, then she will get more opportunities to bang the bottle of champagne, pop the cork, and then to spray. So we will be back in a couple of rounds' time, in a couple of weeks' time, rather. We head to Brands Hatch for the season finale. We will find out who will be crowned the first ever W Series champion. Will it be Bytska Visa? Will it be Jamie Chadwick on Jamie Chadwick's home soil? We will find out. We'll have plenty of action coming from that race as well. This, this race was incredible to watch, but it's Megan Giltz who is the winner. Brands Hatch then, a couple of weeks' time. Make sure you join us then. Catherine Bormier just having a quick chat with the drivers there. But we will be back then. So Brands Hatch always giving the action. W Series will conclude then.